Hi everyone, um, welcome to episode five of the Luminates podcast. I'm Hayley, um, I live in central Victoria in Australia. I'm a mum of two little kids and I love to knit and sew and tell you all about it. So if you're new to the podcast, welcome, nice to see you. If you're a returning visitor, thanks so much. Um, thanks to everyone who's liked and subscribed and left comments. It's always lovely to hear them. Uh, we've just been put into a snap lockdown here in Victoria. Um, COVID's gotten a little crazy over the last week. So they're saying it's a seven day lockdown, but I feel like it's probably going to be more than that. But staying at home doesn't bother me too much. Uh, I like to be at home. Um, I just hope that everyone can do their bit and help make things better again. So that's what's going on here. Um, if there's any interruptions, it'll be because my husband and kids are playing outside while I do this. So um, they can't really go too far, but we're lucky we've got a big block and plenty of room to run and play and lots to do. So if they pop in and say hi, um, it's just going to be part of it. Things have been crazy here. There's just been so much going on and we've had illness and we've had a few little accidents, like nothing serious, but a couple of trips to emergency and just general strangeness, I suppose. Um, Yesterday I pulled a muscle in my leg that I'd already pulled and it was really painful. I didn't think it could really hurt that much. So I'm hobbling around a little bit like lurch. Um, it's a really odd walk and every time I sort of see my reflection in a window or something, I think, oh wow, I really need to walk a little bit more elegantly than that, but I can't because my leg is killing me. It's just a calf muscle and I think it'll be better in a couple of days, but good chance to sit down and do some knitting and that kind of thing. So anyway, enough of me <laughs> whinging. Um, I'm going to, oh, first I'll tell you about this that I'm wearing. This is a Shimo sweater by Lini Hoy and this was um, a pattern that I saw and absolutely fell in love with, with probably about a year ago, um, but it wasn't available in English. So I waited and waited and waited and it finally came out in English and I bought it straight away. I already had the yarn waiting for it and I knitted up this jumper. I absolutely love it. It's got this beautiful lace detail all the way down the front, um, lots of twisted rib on the neck and the cuffs. Um, and I love twisted rib. I always use twisted rib if there's ribbing required. Probably I'm not supposed to, but I just really much prefer the way it looks. The reason that this sweater doesn't get as much wear as what I think it would have is because I tried a new yarn joining technique right here and it stands out like crazy. I didn't realize at the time, otherwise I would have ripped it back and redone it, but it wasn't until I finished the sweater that I really saw it and went, oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so it's just this patch here. And I think what I did was I doubled up. So I doubled the yarn and sort of knitted it along with the neck slot. And it just, it makes it really visible. And so that was quite disappointing because I don't want to wear a brooch or something with this. I'm really, really proud of it. It's just this little piece here, but that's also me needing to work towards um, recovering from perfectionism, which is something that I'm working on all the time because um, I have been a perfectionist. Uh, I don't think I am anymore. I hope I'm not, but it's little things like that that would have once upon a time set me right off. But now I'm sort of trying to come to terms with it a little bit. Um, if you want to find me on other media, um, I'm on Instagram at lumi.knits and you can find me on Ravelry at lumi.knitsx or all case or one word. I keep my Ravelry pages pretty up to date and I don't post on Instagram as much as I used to. I just don't really have the time, I suppose. But yeah, you can find little bits and pieces over there. So I've got some finished objects to show today and some new cast-ons um, and some acquisitions, which is unusual for me. I don't usually buy a lot. I've got a lot of stash yarn, a lot of stash fabric, um, but I occasionally will get a few little things. If it's my birthday or something like that, I usually uh, put in special requests of my family and yeah, that's usually how I get new acquisitions. So definitely not a frequent thing. But I'll get straight into the new, um, sorry, I'll get straight into the finished objects. I haven't finished anything knit-wise, but I have done a couple of um, sewing projects that I wanted to share. So 
First thing I wanted to share are these little pants. So these pants are the Sage Pants by Flora Child Co on Etsy. My daughter has decided that she does not like jeans. She's, she's three, so she decides that she doesn't like a lot of things and quite often and quite loudly, but she's been sort of been rallying against jeans for a while. She says they hurt her legs, they're uncomfortable. And she's a really active kid. She's always climbing and riding bikes and chasing and things like that. So I understand where she's coming from with that. Kids' jeans aren't really designed to be comfortable. So I thought, you know, there's there's not that many woven pants patterns around, um, woven pants around in shops. And I don't really like consuming a lot anyway. So I decided that I would just find a pattern and make her some with the loads of stash fabric I find. So I'm sorry for the wrinkles, but these are the Sage Pants by Flora Child Co. They're my first try at it. Um, I followed the pattern exactly, so I overlocked, which I don't usually do, and I won't do again because I just, flat belt seams or French seams are just so much nicer. The overlocking stitch is showing through because I'm a bit sloppy with my, um, with my overlocking, so I wasn't very careful in making sure that the um, seam came before the overlocking, if you know what I mean. But overall, I really like the pattern. It's got little sort of side pockets and my daughter has to have pockets because she loves them. Um, she pretty much refuses to wear things that don't have pockets except for leggings. So but I've got little pockets and again I was a bit dodgy with my bar tacks um, but that was just because I think I was having trouble with my bobbin. So I was a bit, a bit um, slapdash with that which you can probably see there. They're not the prettiest side tacks but the pants sit quite high on her which is good because she does have a problem with pants falling down. It's an elasticized waist which is great because she can take them on and off easily herself. Um, she's very independent and it's got these cute little legs like they, they come in at the ankle so they're not sort of flopping around all over the place but they're quite loose in the leg. Very comfortable. She absolutely loves them and this fabric is just something I think I picked up at an op shop or a thrift store years and years ago and I've just been holding on to and the colour actually suits her to her so I'll try and pop in a photo of her modeling these. Um, it was that was an experience, I can tell you. Anyway, Sage Pants by Flora Child Co. on Etsy. All the links for this kind of thing will be in the notes below. The uh, sizes, I think, three months to seven years. So I will make some for my son as well just for kicking around and yeah, he also enjoys pockets and he likes sort of really comfortable garments. No idea where they get that from, <laughs> but yeah. So I'll be making quite a few of these pants, really happy with the pattern. Just the adjustments that I'll make will be to flat fell or French, probably flat fell, but we'll see how we go. So there's those. Um, my next finished object is actually a gift. It's my niece's birthday today. It's either today or tomorrow. So I doubt that she'll watch this, but if you do, happy birthday, Lucy. I made her, she's, oh, she's turning eight. I'm not the world's best auntie when it comes to chronology. So I think she's turning eight. She could be nine, definitely not seven. I'm pretty sure she's eight. And she is a really crafty and creative girl. Um, she loves to sort of do things with her hands, very artistic. And I thought that it would be a lovely thing for me to be able to teach her to knit. So I made her a project bag, which I'll show in more detail in a moment. And I just popped in some, um, just some birch bamboo needles and a crochet hook, because even if she doesn't want to knit, she might crochet. And I find crochet hooks are really handy for knitting anyway. Um, if I drop a stitch or something. And then just some, um, some colorful yarn in the color she likes. Um, I made the mistake of taking my daughter the spotlight with me to help choose the yarn and she wanted to choose the most heinous yarn you've ever seen in your life. Just, I can't even describe it. And I eventually steered her towards this because we know that my niece really likes pink and purple. So we ended up getting her just two balls of this just from Spotlight. Um, so this is the project bag. This is the uh, Kato project bag by Kandau Patterns on Etsy. 
Um, it's a great little pattern and I've, this is the second time I've made it. The first time I made it I didn't use the fusible interfacing just because I didn't have any on hand. But with this one I did the fusible interfacing and it just stands up by itself, which my first one definitely doesn't. Um, it's got, I'll turn it inside out so you can see the pockets. It's fully lined and it's got these two pockets just for, you know, popping bits and pieces in um, and just a drawstring closure. It does have the option for a strap, but I find the strap on mine is quite redundant. I really don't need it. So I thought for my niece that probably um, she wouldn't need it either, especially because she's just beginning. But I think she'll probably, um, I'll give her a hand to cast on and um, just learn the knit stitches once we come out of lockdown and just make a simple little stockinette scarf. And I think she'll really um, enjoy that. And if she doesn't, she's got a little bag that she can keep things in anyway. And some knitting needles and a crochet hook for when the time comes that she wants to learn to do that. So that is, they are my two finished objects for this podcast. Um, I don't think there's anything more I really need to say about those. Um, my new cast-ons. Ah, oh, yes. My new cast-on. Last podcast I showed some free patterns on um, Etsy. No, free patterns on Ravelry, sorry, that I thought were really cute and that I'd like to get to one day. And one of them was the... Thunder and Lightning Socks by Dawn Henderson for Fancy Tiger Crafts. They're just real cute little shorty socks with some bobbles and chevron and everything. So I did start those. I cast those on um, this last week. So they're really, really adorable. This one has, that's the whole top section. That's the whole leg section finished. And I've started working on the heel flap down here. And because I, ha I get terrible se second sock syndrome, I've also started on the second sock so that I'm not too far behind and I can finish them roughly around the same time. Usually I go section for section. So once I've done a leg for one, I do the leg for the other, heel for one, heel for the other, and so on and so forth. So another thing about this is the, um, I've started to do the heel flap and gusset on longer needles, which has been a revelation because I love my nine inch circulars but I used to find doing the heel flap and gusset and having so many stitches floating around just was difficult. So now I'm knitting it on longer needles and it's so much easier, so much faster. Um, and it's a really good thing to do. So if you're a nine inch circular knitter and you don't use your brain very much, change them to the longer needles. Your life will improve dramatically. So I'm knitting these on, 2.75 millimeter, which is a US, oh, it's upside down. Don't know, 2.75 millimeter, higher, higher inch, um, nine inch circulars, and I think these are Knit Peaks 2.75 or Knit Pro, I can't remember. Um, and the yarn, sorry, I'm a bit spacey today. The yarn is a Hawthorne Cottage. 7525 Merino Nylon Blend, um, and that's from Hawthorne Cottage on Etsy. I saw this and I just love the colour. Um, it's, you know that I'm a sucker for mustard, um, and this is just a really pretty colour. It's coming up really nicely. I hope you can see it. You have to forgive me because I can't have the camera face, like I can't use my phone to film and have the front camera facing me because my eyes just go all over the place and I look a bit crazy. <laughs> so I have to have just the camera pointing towards me so I've got no idea if things are focused or if things are looking okay. One day I'll probably get a more professional setup, but not today. So these are my beautiful little thunder and lightning socks. Really like the pattern, well written, easy to follow. Highly recommend if you're wanting to knit just some fast, cute, four ply fingering weight socks, good one to do. Um, my next work in progress is my Salmon Shawl by Stephen West. And this has been just a really amazing, easy, mindless knit. The only time you have to pay attention is when you're doing the, um, the eyelet sections and they're, they're a long way between. And otherwise you're just knitting, 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 turning, knitting, 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 knitting. It's a little hard to show as shawls are because of the length and 
this at the needles. I'll do my best. So I've made quite a bit of progress. I think I'm on to the fourth section. So this here is the first, second, third, fourth. Oh, I'm on to the sixth section. And this is just one of the um one of the straight sections. And I'm really enjoying this one. So I'll hold it up so you can oh don't fall off there. I'll hold it up so you can see. So this one is violets. I went a bit crazy with the mohair and I feel like maybe it's gonna be a bit odd, but this is really just for fun. I don't mind if it does come out a bit odd and a bit quirky. Um yeah, it's just for fun and just something to keep me warm in these chilly autumn days. Not that there's much autumn left. I think we're just about to head into winter. So there's so many different colours and variations because you're holding the yarn double. I really like this little section here. The eyelets are super cute. Um, yeah, just, just a fun, easy shawl knit. This is the first shawl I've ever knit. So... I just wanted something pretty basic um, and I know that Stephen West is a master which is why I chose this pattern and also because it's two fingering weights held together so it knits up quite quickly. Um, yeah so that's the same in short by Stephen West. And you'll be really pleased to know that my Felix sweater came out of time out so it's not up there anymore it's down here and last night I actually finished a sleeve which is great because I felt like this was never going to get off the needles I really don't enjoy magic loop <laughs> I just I'm spoiled by nine inch circulars but I can't get nine inch circulars large enough so I've got my first sleeve completed I did start the ribbing a little earlier than recommended because I really like a long ribbed sleeve and I was a bit worried that it was going to be too narrow the sleeve would be too narrow but um, I like the way that it kind of cinches in at the wrist here and it comes down almost over the top of my hand to my knuckles which suits me really really well. I was going to go straight on to my next sleeve but then I decided that I would give myself a little break so I have started to pick up the button band on the left hand side which is here and I'm just going to be working away on that so hopefully next podcast no promises, but hopefully next podcast I'll be finished with this Felix cardigan. Um, I feel like I've got a bit of momentum now and I'm ready to make some progress with it. So I think that's it in terms of new cast-ons and works in progress. They're the ones I've been working on. My penguinos over in its enormous basket in the corner. Haven't really picked that up because I've been focusing on the Felix. So I'll talk a little bit about my acquisitions, which is, like I said, unusual for me, but um, it's something nice to talk about. I'll do the yarn first and then the fabric. So my first acquisition was a little birthday gift for myself, and I've wanted them for a long time. Um, they're some sock lockers. So I got the Katrinkles ones because they're adjustable. Um, I do need socks for other people, so it's good to be able to adjust it so that it can fit them. You can adjust the leg and you can adjust the foot. I don't think you, you wouldn't adjust a heel. Maybe someone would, but not me. So I've adjusted these to my foot size and I'm really looking forward to using them. Um, they seem pretty well made, pretty sturdy. I was a bit worried about snapping them when I was putting the studs in, but they, they're fine. They didn't snap, so that's a bonus. And I also purchased from the same place, not Katrinkles, it's a, a shop called The Yarn Bowl in Australia. Um, so I bought the sock lockers and some yarn from them. Um, I bought some socks here, DK by Coop Knits, and this colourway is called Pigeon. And I am really looking forward to making myself a beautiful pair of cosy socks from these. Um, they're a 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. Colourway is Pigeon and it's this really, I'm not a purple person, but it's this really beautiful purple and it's got kind of like greys and brighter purples in there. You probably won't be able to see it. Um, again, I've got no idea if this is even in frame. But I bought two skeins of that and I'm looking forward to making something special with that in the future. I just have to find the right DK sock pattern. 
maybe something with a little lace would be nice. I haven't decided. Anyway, the shop that I bought them from is called The Yarn Bowl. They're in Queensland. Um, and I think their website is just theyarnbowl.com.au. They've got a really nice selection of stuff and I was very happy to see that they had the Katrinkles things because I like the Katrinkles products, but I can't pay $30 in postage to get them over here from the USA. So that was one of my acquisitions. The next one was um, some yarn for my Tecumseh sweat up by Royal Knitworks, Caitlin Hunter. And I know after I knit my Soul Dotna, I was hesitant to buy any more patterns from this designer because of the heavy modifications I had to make. But her stuff is just so beautiful. Her designs are so lovely. And I thought, well, I can either stand on principle and not buy them, or I can just use my very limited math skills and make some calculations, make some adjustments and have a try. So I decided that I would do that. Um, the yarn that I bought for this is the Eight Fly Bendigo Tweed. It's a 75% wool, 25% net, 10% bamboo um, in a DK weight. Um, I stayed really true to the colours in the pattern that she used because they're beautiful. So this is my main colour. It's a natural tweed, so it's just a kind of, you know, off-white with some flecks in it. Um, one of my contrast colours is this one called Wild Honey. And again, it's just a beautiful yellow with um, some flecks. And instead of going with a dark grey, I went with a dark blue. This is the same Bendigo tweed in vintage denim. And I just think that they're all going to look really beautiful together. So if you haven't checked out the Tecumseh pat, um, sweater pattern, um, just jump on Ravelry or just Google it and take a look and you'll see sort of what colours I'm going to put where. Um, I've done all my calculations for mods. I'll probably do an anthology hat to test it out. I just have to make sure I've got enough yarn to do that and not, <laughs> not give myself a heart attack at the end of the sweater. Um, I have looked at a lot of neck mods because I know that um, Caitlin Hunter's patterns do tend to have that neck that I don't enjoy. Um, so I've worked out the neck mods that I'm going to do and I'm basing it off my measurements for the Soul Dotna. And I'm also going to separate the sleeves earlier. I'm going to play it a little bit by ear, but I, I see that a lot of people sort of separate after the second repeat of pattern A. And I think that's probably what I'll do, um, just because I don't really like that drop armpit, I guess. Um, it's just a bit flappy on me. So that's my yarn acquisition. I've got all my notes in here. I'm just about to skip to another page. So if it looks like I'm looking at the floor, it's just the lower on my tripod. Um, oh, one more thing I was going to talk about in terms of upcoming plans and acquisitions. I'm waiting extremely patiently for the Lodestar pattern to come out. I think it's June 3rd, so only a few more days. I can't wait to buy the pattern, and I'm tossing up whether or not I'm going to buy the digital issue of the Pom Pom magazine um, this quarter. I bought it as a hard copy last quarter. I was a little bit underwhelmed. Um, it just, it was a lot of money for not a lot of magazine, I felt. Um, so I think I will probably just stick with the digital patterns. I'll go through and have a really good look and see if there's multiple that I plan on knitting. And if there's not, I'll probably just buy the patterns that I want to knit individually. There is a really beautiful colour work sock on there that I'm quite interested in. So that's what I'm waiting for. Um, once I've got the pattern, I'll decide on the yarn. It'll probably be Bendigo Woolen Mills just because it's so affordable. I know it washes well. Um, I'm really comfortable using it and it's local to me, so um, I like to support local businesses where I can. And that's the load stuff. Um, I wanted to show some fabric that I bought, and this is, again, birthday <laughs> a birthday acquisition. I know I said I was going to make a million pairs <laughs> of the Otis overalls, but I'm still on one, um, and I really want more. So I've... Went, I went to Spotlight, which is just my local big box fabric store, and got some denim. Just a really light, soft denim. It's not thick. 
Um, and I thought that will make a really nice basic pair of overalls. I will modify it quite heavily in that I won't do the back pocket, front pocket. Um, I extend the leg and I am going to cut the bodice as one piece instead of two. And I'm also thinking about skipping the lantern cuff and just making it a straight leg, but I haven't decided on that yet. So that's the denim. And this is the one that I've been really keen to do. Um, it's a cord, a pinwheel cord. Again, mustard, with just this cute little floral pattern over it. And I really need to get my skates on if I wanna wear this over winter because it's a bit, bit heavier than my existing one. Um, and I think it'll be a really good winter garment, but I am, am going to have to adjust that leg because that's one of the things that I'm not 100% happy with in that Otis pattern. So that is it, I think. I also bought just some camo fabric for my son to make him a pair of those sage pants. Um, I don't think I've really got anything else to talk about. Hope I didn't go too fast today. I'm feeling a bit of time pressure because I know any minute there's going to be two hungry, curly-haired, crazy kids screaming in through the back door. Uh, if you've got any questions for me or any comments, um, please go ahead, pop them down below. I answer. I think I answer pretty much every one. And if I haven't, it's just because I've accidentally overlooked it. I love being able to have these conversations with you all. Um, I enjoy the tips. Someone gave me a tip for an alternative to Kitchener, and I'm really looking forward to trying that out. I think probably with my thunder and lightning socks. So I'll give that a go. Um, yeah, but thanks ev again, everyone who comments, likes, subscribes. I really appreciate it. Um, it's really humbling to see that people actually watch this because I do tend to waffle on a little bit. And thank you. I hope wherever you are, you're not in, the, in a bad situation when it comes to COVID. Things here aren't as terrible as what they sound. Um, I don't think, but I do feel like it's going to get worse. I think we got a little bit complacent and forgot that it is something that evolves and changes and spreads rapidly. So we're in a seven day lockdown. I think it will probably end up getting extended, but I'm not a health expert, so who knows, but wherever you are, if you're in lockdown, I hope that you've got plenty of things to keep you occupied and plenty of people you can video chat with. Um, I always find that it's a really nice time just to, be with my family and spend time with them and get back to basics there. It also gives us time to do activities that we don't usually get to do. So I guess what I'm saying is if you are in lockdown, I feel you, I hear you, and I hope that you can find a way through it. If you're not, congratulations and go out and enjoy your day. So have a wonderful day, wonderful week. I don't know how long it'll be before I podcast again. Hopefully not too long because I really enjoy it. But I'm going to stop talking. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.